This is it, isn't it? I'm dead. No. But you are dying. <laughs> oh, come on. Relax. Everyone's dying. Well, not me, obviously, but... What are you? Are you, are you me from the future? Am I in the multiverse? Here. You'll need this. Oh my god. Is this an infinity stone? No. Spearmint. <laughs> it's not your superhero origin story, I'm afraid. Me, on the other hand, I represent all of your style, your charm and your presence, so who knows? Ah, so you're my ego. <laughs> Must be why you're such a dick. So what am I doing here? Well, you're a self-indulgent artsy twat. I thought that was obvious. Yeah, I didn't mean physically here, I meant here in life. Ah, well, mental breakdown, probably. How's life been, Jeffrey? Dunno, a lot of death, depression and boredom. Where do you want to start? Oh, Jesus Christ, not there. This is a comedy special, right? Yeah. At least I think so. I've just been in a little bit of a rut lately. Right, well, instead of depressing everyone, why don't we bury that and instead focus on what excites us the most? Hmm. You mean strong hands and dainty ankles? No, fucking weirdo. I was talking about performing. Right, yeah, that makes more sense. Let's do this. Welcome, New York City. How are we doing? All right. Six of you. Fantastic. The rest of the audience just staring at me like, what the fuck is this? I didn't know he was a street magician. Not a street magician, madam. Just had a really good weekend in Hot Topic. This is my life, sir. Chill out. It's going to be fine. I'm not a homosexual. Don't worry. Just a European. Same thing in America, isn't it? I did not know that shit in England. This is what everyone looks like in England. Just skinny trousers, nice little suit, flamboyant shirt, little haircut jewelry. Hello, how are you? Oh, yes, good morning, how are you? Uh, uh. <laughs> My lady. That's really what England's like. It's like Lord of the fucking Rings back there. And then I came out here to America. It's a New York City, the greatest city in the world, am I right? Not always. <laughs> I flew in with my visa, I gave it to the guy at the TSA and he looked at it, stamped it. <laughs> Welcome to America, sir. You're a homosexual now. <laughs> why? Excuse me, why? <laughs> so now I'm just out there sucking a mean dick, daddy. <laughs> I'm rushing that cock, bro. I'm destroying that D, you can't avoid my gaze. <laughs> Guzzling that girth. <laughs> I might be, you don't know, do you? Look how uncomfortable this guy in the front row is, man. I get it, it's confusing as fuck, this is my life. Six foot four, quite a broad fella. Got the low voice, got the beard. But then I've got the skinny little trousers on. Flamboyant jewelry, the fucking haircut. You don't know if I want to fight you or fist you, do you? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I dress like this because I live in Los Angeles now. You can get away with this in Los Angeles, madam. This in Los Angeles, it's called doing it. Just fucking doing it. Ridiculous. People see me in the street, they see me coming, their eyes light up like, oh my God, look at this guy, he's doing it. He's really doing it, look at him. Sarah, he's doing it. Look at the suit, look at the shoes. Look at the jewelry, oh my God, he's British. He's fucking doing it. We're doing it too, don't worry. We're doing it too. We got tiny dogs in tiny purses. We've been for a hike up Runyon Canyon, six in the morning. I wrote a script in Starbucks, sir. I'm fucking doing it. 
But that's not where I live when I first moved to America. I came here to New York City, greatest city in the world. And this, it's not doing it in New York City, is it? This is what the fuck are you doing? In New York City. I remember the first day that I moved out here. I was at the cellar, it's my home. I was excited about being in the city. I got all dressed up on my first day in my apartment. I leave my apartment door. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling proud, I'm feeling beautiful and fabulous. And I walk out, two steps, two steps out of my apartment door. Immediately this guy sees me and just double takes. He goes, hey, yo, 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 yo. What the fuck are you wearing, son? <laughs> You look mad gay, yo! <laughs> so Jesus Christ! Good morning, Dorman. <laughs> I'm not actually a homosexual, but I considered it. If you have enough bad heartbreaks for women, you've got to consider it. If you're a heterosexual man, how do you know you're heterosexual unless you consider whether you could be bisexual or a homosexual first? I looked at my relationships that I have with men. My best friend, Seth, in the city, right? Me and him, super close. And it's such an easy relationship. Just laughter, just good times, just hanging out. It's always easy. We'll watch the game on a Sunday together. Hey, bro, what's up, man? Hey, man come and watch your game. Yeah, take a, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, let's get some pizza in. Okay, come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Imagine if when that game just hit half time, we could look at each other and go, Oh, bro, it's half time. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> You want to suck each other's dicks? <laughs> Just, <laughs> fuck yeah, let's do it. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Nap, game's back on, eat pizza. Um, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Epic dick suck, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although next time we're ordering Hawaiian pizza because you need the fucking pineapple. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I don't know, but then I understand, you know, we, we're a progressive audience, I hope we all feel like the world should be more equal. That'd be nice. We'd like to see all people treated that way. And maybe you're sitting there in the audience and I can feel some of the liberal bum holes just tightening up a little bit on that. <laughs> what? I don't know if I can laugh at this joke. This comedian is suggesting that being a homosexual is a choice. Relax, calm down, it's gonna be all right. First of all, I am a friend of the LGBTQI plus community. <laughs> Fucking look at me. And I agree with you, being a homosexual is not a choice. I'm just saying maybe for me, it could be. <laughs> My body's breaking down, I think. 38 now, so like after 35, shit starts to go a little bit funky. Just some parts like knees and the bladder. Did anyone else do a lot of ketamine in their 20s? <laughs> no, I guess not then, that's the answer to that one. I did a lot of horse tranquilizer when I was a young man, and I won many races. <laughs> I think it's damaged my body, like ketamine especially damages your bladder. I can't go for a pee without having two peas. You know what I'm talking about? Any other men in the audience feeling me on that one? No? Oh yeah, your shit just snaps shut, does it, sir? Yours fucking does, of course it. How old are you? 31. 31, yeah. You haven't hit the 35 mark yet, so your shit just Your When you pee, it's like Eminem doing a rap. Do you know what I mean? Stop! Doesn't even have to shake his. Just nothing. Just The youthful urethra just snaps itself shut. Tucks it away. Doesn't even wash his hands. He's fucking out. Back to the dance floor. Not me, bro. My bladder, my penis situation is like a scat jazz singer. <laughs> I get up in that urinal, I'm just like. Skip it, pop, 
I don't know when that shit's gonna end. I don't know when it's gonna come out again. I have to shake it for fucking 20 minutes afterwards. Just get every lot. I have to milk it like I'm like I'm trying to get venom out of a snake. Just go. Two hands. And I got foreskin, so I have to get that out of the folds, you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> Finally, I popped that bad boy away. I got to wash my hands, check the hair, get to that door of the restroom. <laughs> See you later. Scooty boo boo. <laughs> Getting older. And I'm trying to do things about it, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I've been fit a couple of times in my life. And it, it's hard getting fit when you haven't done it for the majority of your existence. If you're a man and you're trying to get fit, you're trying to get muscular, you're trying to work out for the first time, do not do it with another man who already knows how to work out. Because they will try and break you, ruin you, emasculate you in every way. I went and worked out with my buddy Aaron Berg. He's a comedian, fantastic comedian. Big bloke, used to professionally bodybuild back in the day. And he's like, oh yeah, man, I'll take you to the gym out here in New York. We're gonna start with leg day. Guess what, leg day, not the easiest day, is it? <laughs> it is the worst of days. There's many memes on the internet about it. I turned up completely naive. I was in my short shorts, my little knee socks, like, what are we doing today for leg day? PAs? <laughs> I'm ready. Good toes, naughty toes, good toes, naughty toes. I go, no bro, we're gonna lift weights with our legs. That's how we do it. I'm like, of course we are, of course we are. I knew that. And we start with all the usual shit. You know, you do the leg extensions. Oh God, you do the curls behind. Oh, we did some squats. Squats did not go well for me. I was already wobbling. I was not in a good place. And he's making me lift exactly what he's lifting. And I've never done lifting in my entire life. And he is a gigantic man. Eventually, I'm like, all right, we're good, right? We're done, we're good, right? It's gonna be fine. He's like, almost, we're just gonna finish up with a little bit of leg press. Well, okay, that sounds, that sounds all right. Not so. Leg press is when you lay on your back, right? On this pad, and you put your feet against another pad, and then they stack weights on either side, and you have to lift those weights. He stacked up four, five, six, seven 45 pound plates on either side. And he's like, it's easy, bro. All I need from you are three reps. Three reps to completion. I can do this. I can prove myself. All right. Rep number one, let's go. I can tell after rep number one, the rest of these reps are not gonna go very fucking well, are they? <laughs> and I was right, ladies and gentlemen, because when I let my leg down to do a second rep, the weight came down, my legs crumbled under the weight, the top of my thighs went into the bottom of my rib cage so hard, I cracked two of my ribs, and then I immediately went the fuck home. <laughs> to cry and consider whether I am even a man at all. <laughs> I was in so much pain in the morning. I woke up. This is what happens when you tear your muscles and you overdo it that much in the gym. My muscles swole up over my kneecaps. I just not. They were over the top, filled with liquid. I phoned one of my friends who's a nurse. I'm like, I haven't got any health insurance. What the fuck shall I do? What's going on? I can't move. She's like, it's all right, it's all right. You don't have to come to hospital just yet. What's happening is myoglobin, blood, is leaking out of your muscles into your body. You'll pass it. Drink lots of water, rest. You'll be fine in a few weeks. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then later that day, that morning, I found out exactly where the blood comes out. It's not out your legs. It's out the front, isn't it? <laughs> By day number three of standing over my toilet, these giant Michelin man legs <laughs> staring into my toilet bowl as I peed pure blood. 
I thought to myself, Jesus Christ, Jeff. In your pursuit of ultimate masculinity, you've just induced your first period. How do we assert masculinity? I'm conflicted, I don't really know. First time I tried to look after a girl in New York City, I got arrested. I did a show here at the Comedy Cellar. I stepped off stage, there were a couple of girls in the back of the room, Swedish, there were tourists here and there. We want to go party with you. I was like, yeah, let's do that. They had a big bag of mushrooms. They're like, we're gonna take these. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds fantastic. We ate all the mushrooms, we went to a local bar, and about 20 minutes into being in that bar, some drunk douchebag walked over to one of the girls and just stuck his hand at the back of her skirt and like grabbed her ass and was like, assaulting her. And I walked over, like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? He's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I've been wasted, bro. I've been wasted, I've been wasted. I'm sorry. So we left. 20 minutes more go by, I get a tap on the shoulder, I turn around, and a guy just smashed me in the face. Sucker punched me like a bitch. But I'm six foot four, and I wear a lot of jewelry like I shop at Hot Topic. <laughs> so I put these emo knuckle dusters to good use, and I opened up his head. Police arrive, I'm standing there six foot four, this guy's about five foot nine, his face is covered in blood, they slapped me in handcuffs. Girls, nowhere to be seen. Ladies, please tell them what happened. No, sorry, we have to go to a little rave. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> Going to a late night rave party, bye. Thanks, Sweden. <laughs> now, I'm not an idiot, I'm not a moron, I was educated, I've traveled the world. I know that if I didn't say that I was the victim of the crime immediately, then the police are gonna slam me in cuffs, they're gonna charge me, I'm gonna get kicked out of the country. I'm on a visa at that point. So I told the police officers, hey, I'm the victim of a crime, I defended myself, and I need to go to the hospital to have my wounds checked out. All right, I have some damage, they're like, oh, fuck. So they call an ambulance up. Ambulance comes to collect us. One of the police officers carts me into the back of the ambulance with my bag of shit. And he goes, right, sit down. I sit down. And they turn the sirens on. And they start driving away. And all the mushrooms kicked in. <laughs> That's a rude awakening. I'm sitting in the back of that ambulance. I'm hearing, Woo! And my body's going, you need to dance. <laughs> we arrive at the hospital, the police officer jumps out, opens up the door, and as I stand up to come and join him, I'm like, oh, there's a tiny little bag of mushroom caps in my, what, drug pocket. You know the pocket on your jeans, that little pocket there? That's a drug pocket, isn't it? What the fuck else was that designed for, do you know what I mean? It's a drug pocket. It fits drugs perfectly, all different types and kinds. What is that for? It's, it's not like, oh, I need to make a phone call in the 1950s. <laughs> There's my quarters. Drugs. So I realize I've got these mushroom caps in this drug pocket, and I'm like, I'm gonna get super arrested if I don't get rid of those. That's it, I'm done, I'm gonna go to prison. So as I stand up in the ambulance, I slide my hands around the side, and I get my finger into my drug pocket and I scoop out that baggie and I crunch it in my hand and I step out of the ambulance and I'm being led by the arm by the police officer towards the door. And there's this homeless guy sitting by the door, sliding doors of accident emergency with a blanket and some cardboard wrapped around him, just watching the whole scene unfolded. And he sees me walking towards the venue, walking towards that hospital door. And as I'm walking along, I just flick. <laughs> Off it goes, flick that little bag of mushroom caps behind me, onto the floor, boom, I'm free. It's gonna be okay. And I open my eyes and I see the homeless guy looking straight into my eyes. And he just goes. As if to say, you just made both our nights so much better. <laughs> People come up to me after shows. I had one dude walk up to me and he was definitely a fucking racist. He walked straight up, cowboy looking dude. He saw me in my outfit, he saw the outfit choice and he thought, he's one of mine. 
I came off stage and I was talking about Trump at the time. This was a few years ago. And he walked straight up to me and go, hey, man, hey, you're pretty funny, dude. But I didn't like what you said about Trump, dude. Come on, man, you come from England. You understand about immigrants. You got those Taliban and those Muslims causing problems, stabbing people, shooting people. You don't want to build a wall around England? I was like, surrounded by fucking water, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Call me crazy, not sure that would be the best spending of money to deal with that problem. But also, bro, no, I, I, I don't want to build a fucking wall because I'm not, I'm not Trump support, I'm not a Republican, I'm not, I'm not a fucking racist and I don't hate other people from other countries. I need a place to fucking live. Also, if you hadn't noticed, I'm an immigrant. This is not a native New Yorker accent, bruv. I'm literally an immigrant in this country on a fucking green card, do you know what I mean? I stand with the Mexicans on this one, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I stand with the Mexican community. Ethically, morally, socially, obviously not physically, because they stand about here. Oh, relax, liberals, relax. <laughs> Chill out, let it out. You think I make a joke like that in 2022 without doing my research? You are wrong. I've been on Google. What is the average size of a 38-year-old Mexican male? <laughs> Guess what? I'm six foot four. That makes me a gringo gigante. I mentioned my love, I mentioned my goddess. So I met this lady three years ago and, uh, and I just proposed to her actually, we we're gonna get married. Yeah, thank you very much. It's very sweet of you, thank you. Thank you, I can't wait, it's gonna be incredible. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with her, it's amazing. I'm scared about facets of the relationship that I have with my fiance. I'm not scared about us, I'm not scared about our connection, I'm not scared about our life together, I'm scared about what comes next, right? We're gonna get married. Then after marriage, some kids, some babies, pop out a few beautiful biracial children. Fucking heal the world. Heal the world. Make it a minute. Just put some beautiful mixed race babies out there. End racism, that's how it works, right? <laughs> and that's scary to me, not because I'm scared of having children, but because I already kind of had a child. I, I raised someone else's daughter in a previous relationship of mine for four and a half years. I lived with them for two and a half. And then when my ex cheated on me, broke up with me, she then turned around and went, oh, and you can't see the little girl because she's not yours. I know, ah, oh, got me laid a lot. <laughs> that story for many years. But it's true, like it, it broke me, that broke me that experience. Because there's no rebound for missing a kid. Like, it just doesn't work like that. Relationships, if they go wrong, all right, you have a rebound eventually. How long have you guys been together? 12 years. 12 years. Have you got kids? No, no. And if you broke up, which you won't, 12 years of unity, you're together. You formed a fucking hair metal band, clearly. <laughs> he wears her spandex on stage. That's how close they are. But if you guys ever broke up, it would suck for a period of time. But also, you're mature enough, sir, to know that eventually you love again, right? You have a rebound, you get back on the horse. That's how it works. Same for you, madam, right? Here's the deal, if you guys ever broke up, eventually you'd have a rebound, right? Your girls would call you up after a few months. Come on, Sarah, we're taking you out. You'd be like, no, I can't, I still really miss it. <laughs> Just sitting at home, come on, bitch, we're taking you out. They come round, they get you in your little black dress, you're looking sexy as hell. You hit that club, don't you? Get a few white wines, you loosen up. One of your songs, come on, Woo! my jam. You hit the dance floor, your friends come up with Jaeger shots. Ah, oh my eye, I'm fucking wasted. You hit that dance floor, do a little bit of twerking, and then you go home and you fuck a dude, right? Textbook rebounds. Textbook rebound for you as well, bro. Boys call you up. No, man, I'm still really missing it. Stop listening to hair metal. Get yourself out of the fucking house. <laughs> You put on your glad rags, your best torn jeans. You fucking hit that nightclub. You get down there, you have a couple of beers with the boys. 
some fucking ACDC comes on. This is my job. You hit that dance floor, Jaeger bombs, do a little bit of grinding, and then you go home, fuck a dude, right? <laughs> I assume. It was like, I never let a woman hurt me again. <laughs> I was quite impressed about how much of it I got in my mouth. I The point I'm making is a rebound, right, to recover from. There's no rebound for missing a five and a half year old that doesn't biologically belong to you. Like, I can't hang around outside a nursery 3.30 in the afternoon <laughs> with a comfort blanket on my shoulder and a copy of Frozen on DVD, staring through the school gates like, who needs a daddy? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Keep the point comedy. Killed that, didn't I? We killed it. And you didn't seem that miserable up there to me. Yeah, well, it's a performance, isn't it? It's when I step off stage, I feel the self-loathing. Even you can't mask that shit. Oh, boo-hoo. Everyone's depressed. If you want to succeed, you're going to have to man up, buttercup. What does that mean, Sally? Man up. In case you forgot, I just buried my best friend and my dad three weeks apart. my friend and my daddy three weeks ago. Oh, spare me. That's why I'm here, to protect you from those feelings. Yeah, well, hiding behind you doesn't really change anything, does it? If I really wanted to man up, I'd have to face those issues and then move beyond them. Yeah, but mental health issues just aren't funny, bro. I've read your diary, it's fucking boring. Well, maybe I just need to explore them differently. Terminals, everyone! I need a full status report and a pound of high-grade indica immediately. Anxiety, what do you have? High blood pressure and the imposter syndrome, Captain Addict. And not you, Lieutenant. The vessel? <laughs> of course. We've entered an existential crisis, Cloud Captain. The vessel is communicating with the duplicate about dead people. He's got full six cents already. Well, at least he's self-reflecting. Not self-reflecting, sir. Literally communicating with a Jipica vessel. Sweet Mary Jane. This is worse than I thought. Chief, any suggestions from the depression deck? I suggest hiding under the covers and doom scrolling till it's over, Captain. Oh, we could press the button. Not necessary. Now pull yourself together, man. Here. Maybe a little pick-me-up will help keep you focused. How the fuck does giving this emo some nose candy help, Captain? Are you trying to get us all killed? If you have a better idea, number two, I'm all ears. Unless, of course, anger can't help us here. Of course I can, boss. I can, um... Uh, oh, I can relieve the internal pressure by punching a hole in a wall. Christ on a come down. Your recovery strategy is to cause internal bleeding. That dank dank had better be on my desk within the next 30 seconds or I will- Sorry to interrupt, chaps, but his cerebral cortex is starting to cook up and I'm all out of dopamine crystals. <gasps> no crystal either. We're doomed. Death is the only escape. Resistance is futile. I'm just going to press the button. Don't, Don't touch, touch the, the button. button. Fine. Now listen up. Everyone stay calm and stay focused. Hence, let's try shocking him back to his senses using the self-harm function. He's not responding, Captain. 
Not I've heard of self-loathing modules, so I can't even slow him down. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Number two, have you tried emotional projection? I've been trying to project, but there's no one else out there. Are you sure you don't want me to just punch the wall? <gasps> what is this obsession with punching fucking walls? Chief, I've got an idea. Could we flood his conscious with panic to induce a state of paralysis, therefore buying ourselves more time? Hey! That may have worked, Captain, if he weren't already in a total mind meltdown. We're all gonna die! Game over! <laughs> I'm pressing it! <laughs> Absolute wanker! Well, that's <laughs> three decades of coping mechanisms entirely down the drain. <laughs> Time to blindly go where no comedian has gone before. Cheers, boys! Self-sabotage. What? You! You never stuck with one thing until mainstream success, did you? DJ, TV, radio, acting, animation, comedy, stand-up, all of these things. Why don't you just pick a lane, son? What can I say? I'm a double threat. I'm a triple threat. I am multiple threats. Yeah? But what's next? Rapper? The point I'm making is that I can create anything if I put time and energy into it. Self-control of the mind. That's why I need to master. Self-control. Right. Didn't you once shit your pants on the London Underground after a Tenacious D concert? Not a fair review of the show. But don't let that devalue the point that I'm making. And what is the point you're making? I think I know exactly how to tell you. Yo, let me lay down a few thoughts for the people. Drop that knowledge. Listen. When I was young, they told me to stay in my lane. Oh, Jeffrey. And as I grew up, thinking affected my brain. If I had no fear, I'd have skated on through till I made it. Now I get no fucks, let a pussy right after I spade it. There's no stopping me. All my comedy shows, they be popping. See, I'm a star like I'm topping the Christmas tree. Even Dave Chappelle won't wanna follow me. We're crazy. Pen a TV show. Global success, watch the paper grow. Now you're hooked on me like I'm a pound of snow. Dilating your pupils, just watch me blow. Okay, what's next? Stages, movies, Oscars, check. Rap game put your boy to the test. Line dancing at thongs with little Nas X. I'm heading right to the top. Tell Champagne Papi to clear my spot. I can do anything, but I can never stop. Like a Viagra boner, I will never flop. So I'm running for president. Landslide win, double check the ballot in. I'm a prophet uniting the earth. Teaching people to perceive their worth. I fix a human race, bring about well peace, and I'm jetting to space. One way ticket, out to Venus in a vessel that's shaped like Elon's penis. Find intelligent life, may that be my intelligent wife. Get superpowers like General Zod, rule all creation, now I'm a god. Command all known power, burn bright, I'm lit like a meteor shower. Look at existence, damn it's boring. Big Bang Part 2, end of story. Because I just did everything. I just did everything. Ridiculous and fun. Ridiculous, certainly. Oh, come on, you didn't enjoy any of that. I rode in a penis rocket and I reset the entire fucking cosmos. What I'm saying is that I could generate more success for us if you would just fit inside of a box that people recognize. Like brand safe, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Be sure to smash that like and subscribe if you're enjoying the comedy special. And do me a favor, tag three of your friends who've had public meltdowns in the comment section below. Or you could go with what's popular right now. Fuck PC culture, Jeff. You couldn't handle life outside of the Matrix. You little cock bitch! Huh? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, what about ketamine for your DJ, Jeff? He was fun. I 
did do a lot of horse tranquilizer in my 20s, didn't I? And we won many a race. <laughs> I knew you were a fan. Why do you want to make me so two-dimensional? You know, you present yourself as the epitome of confidence. But I think you're fearful. Me? Fearful? You can do what you do without me. Oh, by all means, try and entertain the people with your vulnerability. Take away the suit, take away the performance, take away the material, take away the confidence. See how far you get. Okay. I will. I keep looking like I'm looking at your dick, but you've got quite a big fucking dick hanging to the side there. I know it's that. Bro, I just got these new underwears. They're called Hanes X Temp um, uh, Support All or some shit like that. And I had to get them because someone at a comedy club, like one of the bartenders went, you know I can see your dick through your pants. I can see the head of your dick coming down your jeans because I wear skinny little jeans and my pants weren't very supportive. So now I've kind of bunched them like a dancer's cut. You need a bit of that. Your testicles are fucking halfway down your thigh, mate. <laughs> I was worried about fucking French Texan, but the silver fox down the front row is about to make us all a fur jacket. He's got... I thought it was a creature crawling down your leg at first. What is that, a ferret? <laughs> the testicles do get long though, don't they? Your balls must have happened. Do you mind me asking a question? I'm just being straight with you. I'm a little high as well, so I'm being a bit cheeky. I apologize. If you don't want to answer any of these questions, you can just tell me to fuck off. And I'll go ask another old person. <laughs> Your time may come. He was well angry about being called old. He was, fuck you, leech. I can outrun him. It's all right. We're going to be fine. It's just a comedy. Jokes, they're just jokes. I don't mean any of this shit. I don't, I like you all. I'm grateful you're here. All right, so back to your dick and balls. How old are you? Oh, you look great for 67, dude. You look fantastic. Yeah, you're in good health. You work out, I can see that. Yeah, give him a fucking round of applause. It's, I know. <laughs> I haven't worked out for months. That's why I look so skinny and weedy now, but you look good, man. You look strong. Yeah. What are you doing later? I don't know. I just, I just, it did sound like I was trying to fuck him though, didn't it? A little bit. Yeah, you look great, real strong, real talented. Fuck these people, what are you doing right now? <laughs> you already know what my technique is, you already know what my technique is, bro. <laughs> 67. 38. My testicles way longer than they used to be. And that just keeps on going, does it? Or does it, it has to hit a certain point of elasticity where there's just no more skin, it's done. <laughs> so where we, would you be real, realistic with me? Like how far down your thigh would you say when you're standing upright, those bad boys dropped? That far, fuck me, bro. Really? Yo, all right, thank you for being honest with me. You're a fucking legend. But he's also like, yeah, but the dick goes down that far, so. He's a tall lad, I know, he's a big boy, everybody. He's all right, isn't he? He's all right, he's all right. You're not, no complaints in the household. Yo, man, yeah. God, everything's just dropping and shit. But not French dick, French fucking Texan dick. They're inside him still, a little bit. Like, every now and then one of them disappears inside you, doesn't it? You lose a floating, that's called a floating testicle. Every now and then it just happens. It's not, it's not a medical problem, you know, bad thing. It's like, it just goes inside that little bit. Drag queens pop them in there. That's where they stick them in. That's not a joke. That's what they do. They pop them inside of their, that kind of cavity in between, you know, and then pull the penis between and then you take that in and it holds in the balls inside. He's like, I know, I'm French. <laughs> of course. This has always been the way. Um, yeah, so you're still occasionally just, because that's how, that's how sitting upright they are. Mine, no longer an issue. <laughs> I'm not losing those testicles. They're hanging on my knee most of the time, just sitting on my lap on the side. Here's, I mean, hacky sack every morning. Really. <laughs> With his coffee. <laughs> just to toughen up the skin, so in case it hits anything. 
big leathery balls. <laughs> Tattoos on them, just... <laughs> just little lines with a little thing through it. Just a lot of... How many? 67 of those. <laughs> balls scratched up. This bit is just for me now, because this is hilarious. Right? You're a rock star, but you're also like a rave star. You've got so much colour and vivaciousness on the print on your t-shirt and your shoes, but then you're also like a badass rock girl. I love it. You're, you're everything and you could be anything. What do you do for a living? <laughs> Yo, I mean, you sat in the front fucking row, like... It's good though, I'm gonna be nice to you. Look, I mean this guy, I barely, I mean I talked about his balls a little bit, but he's like, he doesn't give a shit. He's in nature, he's like, that's who I am. He's fully accepted himself, and that's why he's so comfortable, and that's why he looks so fucking great, you know what I mean? We're still a little bit young and insecure, we've got some things going on, but that's because we're just working through our shit, therapy, it helps. I've been doing it for a few years now, smoked a bit of marijuana as well. Gave up booze three and a half years ago, that was a good step in the right direction. Gave up class A's, you know. Gave up fucking around, met that woman, we were engaged, it's beautiful. But what I'm saying is there's a few, don't, you don't have to sip it, it's all right. Like, it would, <laughs> let yourself feel these feelings, it's all right, you don't have to rush away from it. I'm gonna ask you again, what do you do for a living? She's a nurse, she's a fucking hero. But now you're laughing like a nurse and what? Well, hang on, whoa, whoa, hold your applause. She could be a nurse down at accident emergency, saving lives every day. She could be in a, a, pe a pediatric heart surgery, saving babies, and that would be incredible. Or she could be putting some fucking silicon in one of the Kardashians' arseholes. Like, and that shit doesn't deserve a round of applause. So, what are you, what kind of nursing? Trauma surgery floor. Fucking hero! She's a hero. That's dope. Why were you embarrassed about saying it? Is it because you get this response now and you're like, I just want to fucking go to bed without. I said, I want to sit at the front. I hope you said somebody say something to me. And then you did. It kind of oh, yeah. off. I apologize. I'm sorry. It's because I'm filming. It's all right. It's, it only might be on TV one day. That's all. So, but at least everyone's going to know that you're a fucking hero. What, what heroic message would you like to say to the people if this, if this makes sense? Wait, boom, she just come down. <laughs> you got superpowers, right? She's super nurse, she's rushing around, she's saving lives, she's stitching people, she's cleaning wounds, she catches a bullet mid-air, fucking flings it back into the gun, and the gun explodes in the hand of the criminal that shot the bullet. She runs around, pew, 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 knocks all the bad guys out, but makes sure they don't get a concussion. <laughs> and then she starts saving lives, and at the end, she looks at her hand, and people are like, oh my God, super nurse, you did it. You did it, super nurse, you did it. And what's your heroic line you say to the people? Bitch, we made it. Bitch, we made it. I love that. You're an absolute queen. You're a goddess. Thank you. That was beautiful. Wow. I love you for that. Love is an interesting thing. Is anyone here in love? Yeah? yeah? A lot of love is in there. Anyone here in love and happy? Yeah. Woo! 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 Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> you think you are, but you're not. And it's not because you're bad people. You're not lying to me, but you've been lied to. Happiness and love, not the same thing. Different concepts. They do not run in parallel. You will be happy millions of times in those relationships, but it doesn't last for any period of longevity. <laughs> Love takes over every fucking thought. You have to consider that person and all the big decisions in your life. You have to think about how they'll feel all the time. It takes over every part of you. Happiness is me when I was single before I met my fiance. <laughs> Going to a warehouse rave on a Tuesday. <laughs> Taking my body weight in ecstasy, madam. To... <laughs> all the ecstasy. Hitting that dance floor, just fucking... <laughs> One for the drug addicts in the audience. Yes. <laughs> Meeting a gorgeous girl on the dance floor. Our minds, our bodies connect the drugs, the music, the euphoria. And then at the end of the night, 6 a.m., when the club is closing and the sun is rising, like a gentleman, I 
and take that beautiful girl back to her doorstep and there, romantically for the first time, Blow cocaine in her arsehole. That's happiness. <laughs> this is love. <clears throat> love has been with your partner for how many years? 20 years, yeah, that's love. Two decades together, congratulations. Beautiful couple, wonderful people. Are these related to you as well? Yeah. I can see they're good people as well. What about these two, are they related to you as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. Could be, could be, could be. Could be adopted, yeah. You could have adopted all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is love, 20 years together. Laying in bed next to each other. This gorgeous lady, she's reading a book at night. She's very intelligent. Just, I think I already knew that about the cosmos. <laughs> oh, she's rich, it's a Kindle. <laughs> Super rich. At the end of the chapter, she just throws the Kindle against the wall and it lands in a basket of other broken Kindles. <laughs> She's fucking loaded. And he'll be asleep on a pillow next to you, won't he? Snoring like an African lion. <laughs> Tesco's are so big, it causes a vibration. <laughs> <laughs> it's the attention to detail. And you'll still look at him 20 years in and still think, I love this man. I never knew 20 years ago I was going to meet a complete stranger in my life, fall so madly in love with them and want to be with them for the rest of mine and their lives together. I will support you through the bad times, always, because I want to see us enjoy the good times together, because I love you, my husband, my darling, my love, with my heart and with my soul. Yeah. And he's there, isn't he? I could suffocate you so fucking easily. Mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Twenty years of this shit. You don't do it, madam. <laughs> and that is love, ladies and gentlemen. I love you guys. You've been amazing. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, guys. Bravo. So what? A little bit of crowd work and a heartfelt moment with your audience and you're all fixed, eh? No, I'm not. But I will be. I'll do a little bit more of that. 
More of what, exactly? Be vulnerable. Create art instead of content. Show a little bit more love and gratitude to them. Wow. You're like so deep, bro. But obviously you don't need me anymore. So I'll just... You know what, before I go, just one thing. Fuck you. You ungrateful piece of shit. I have protected you your entire life. Remember, you created me because you need me. Correction. I needed you. And I'm grateful for everything that you did. It's just time for me to do the rest of it on my own, mate. On your own. You will never finish this comedy special without me. Bitch, we made it. Hang on a sec. Okay, let's go. You're following the British baking show with only 30 minutes to go, and your marshmallow fondant turns out kind of gritty. Bitch, we make it. Now you're driving in the car to grandma's birthday really far But your world is blocked by a garbage truck in the road Literally choices it. It's midnight and you're back in bed Your you have text got left on red Can't get your friend with benefits to reply Literally choices it. Bitch, yes Yes Bitch, yes Yes Bitch, yes Bitch, we made it <laughs> Bitch, yes Yes Bitch, yes Yes Bitch, yes Bitch, we made it! All of a sudden there's a light above An extraterrestrial offers love You look at your genitals and wonder if it's safe Bitch, it is it Your cosmic boning hits a peak A liquid shoots out in a streak It's luminous and it smells a bit like my Bitch, it is it A beam transported to a ship Your alien lover bites their lip And asks you if you'd like to come to space Bitch, it is it you tell your bull there's just one thing from ass that you would like to bring A comedy spectacular by Jeff Lynch Bitch, we played it Bitch, yes Bitch, bitch, yes Bitch, yes Bitch, we made it <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>